Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. And this video, we're gonna talk about Void Ninja, which is a video I put out probably about a year ago. It's one of my most successful videos. It's actually the build that I used to get the legend the first time I did it within Survival. This build is still very viable, especially with Stasis being out there. I know everyone's like, Stasis dominates everything. But a build like this can still dominate in Crucible, but there are some key changes you need to make based on changes that came out with Beyond Light. If you like this video, feel free to like it and subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out. First off, let's go into some of the components of what makes this build successful. So first off, this starts with top tree Night Stalker. One of the primary reasons for that is in PvE, I would use bottom tree because I'm near a lot of enemies. And so because of that, I get some abilities quicker. With top tree, I wanna go invisible really quickly. And I can't always rely on being next to enemies to do that. So that's why I use top tree. It also has some good synergy and some other abilities. First off, with top tree Night Stalker, one of the key components is, is whenever you dodge, which is your melee ability, okay? Whenever you dodge with it, you actually turn invisible. Now, if you have your mobility jacked up between 90 and 100, even though they kind of nerf this, you can still get your dodge ability fairly quickly. Paired with this, if you use Sith Coyote, Sith Coyote actually gives you your dodge back twice. So if you can get your dodge in say 11 seconds or so, okay, with, with sort of a maxed out build with your mobility, then with two dodges, you can kind of see the fact that you your dodge is gonna allow you to be invisible for a number of seconds. You're pretty much gonna be able to stay invisible the entire match. In PvP, this is gonna be really great for being able to get in and out of trouble really quickly. This also allows you to be super aggressive with this build, if you need to be in certain situations. A couple of key things to note since I made this uh, video previously. So first off, I had done this at the, the beginning of Season of the Dawn. What's changed since then is that Powerful Friends is a real thing, and so you'll definitely wanna use Powerful Friends. You'll wanna reserve an arc armor piece that's what you need to be able to put this mod on. It actually adds additional mobility to you if you have another arc mod on that same uh, armor piece, which is pretty easy to do. Also, traction no longer gives you a bonus to mobility, which it did in the, in the past. I still use it for some of its other benefits, but that's one thing to keep in mind. So you may have to rebalance if you've had this build, but with the addition of powerful friends, that will help you do that. For the build I have, again, I have armor that's masterworked. I use mobility mods as well as powerful friends to get as close as I can to 100. I then throw the rest of my mod points into resistance, which will allow you to stay alive longer when you're in PvP matches. Now on top of this, this is obviously going to be something, and I'll talk about tactics in a little bit that you use with this, but weapons also with a build especially in PvP, tend to balance things out. In this build, I'm gonna use Mita Multi-Tool primarily because it's a very fast firing gun. It can help out from long range. It also adds to your mobility as you're running around. It has an intrinsic perk to do that. So again, in this build, I'm really leaning into that mobile hunter who can get into and out of trouble fast. The other thing with the upcoming season, they're planning to pull back sniper rifles a little bit so that they do get flinched a little bit more if you're direct hitting them, which will be good because snipers right now, they did nerf them a little bit, which did make scout rifles come up a little bit, especially that you only can really use low zoom snipers to be really effective. But with this, you'll actually be able to ping them with something fast like this to keep the snipers down their lane. So again, for the most part, I use this as a long range standoff weapon. That's what I use it for. Now you'll, you'll run into maps where you'll run to people who are really good with say a sniper or arbalist, which is the bane of Mita Multi-Tool's existence. When that happens, that's when your energy weapon comes in into play. Now what I use, if you notice in my previous video, I was using an auto rifle. Auto rifles are great and they were really good back then. But what I like to use, I like to have a long range weapon and then something with this build where I can have a good close to medium range. You know, close would probably be like shotguns, but this is somewhere in between. So if I'm having a lot of problems with an arbalist or sniper, this is where I, this build really kicks in. I can go invisible, I can use my smoke grenades as defense to disorient them or to throw their radar off because when you do a smoke bomb and it sticks to a surface, it'll look at radar like a person's over there and you can use that to trick people. And then what you could do is if you have a hard sniper of arbalist or sniper, you can go down, you can go into certain areas on certain maps, you can get in close and take them out. So that's why I kind of pair those weapons together. Something like a sidearm is actually really effective at medium range against something like a shotgun and even Bastion if you time it correctly. And then with auto rifles not being as strong as in the past, this really brings this up. And again, I, I just it's something I really like. I like the timing. My particular weapon has range finder and tap the trigger. So it has longer range, which means 
it can reach out longer it does more damage because of rangefinder but then tap the trigger means that it's really really stable and i can really get in dodge get invisible you know, use my smoke bomb to kind of disorient them and get into engagements and get in people's faces and allows me to be a super aggressive ninja in addition to that what i use if i wasn't using mida I would probably use something like Work of Cloyal, something like that, but since I'm using Exotic already, I like Temptation's Hook. And one of the reasons I like that is I like swords, but swords are actually difficult to get in close. But with this, you can actually use it with your heavy attack to actually take an arc bolt down the lane. Now, where this can be really helpful is someone come, peeks across a corner, you can pop them really quickly, even at longer range. If you time it correctly after an invisible, you can actually get a sniper and arbalest down the lane if they're hard sniping. So again, really useful. It's a good balance, and if nothing else, picking up the heavy in a survival match stops them from having Warcliffe or something else like a rocket launcher that can take you out. So that's really the basics on the build. It hasn't changed too much, but there are some small tweaks you want to make. Obviously, the next season coming on, we'll see what additional tweaks. But again, it's a good balanced build. It doesn't require... One of the th great things I like about this mod, it doesn't require seasonal mods. However, each season... Typically, I can get benefit from some of the seasonal mods to even tweak this a little bit. But this is a good base build. You know, like I said, it's something you can use as a hunter to stand off at long range, to get in and out of trouble, and to kind of go into that whole fantasy of being a fast ninja and really getting in and being super aggressive. It's a build I really enjoyed, and I hope you do too. Again, thanks for watching the video. I hope it provided value, and if it did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel. You know, come in, let's get in the community, talk about the type of builds you'd like to see, and, and give me feedback. Is there things we need to tweak? Are there things improvement? Or how did this build really help you? That's the stuff I really like to hear. I like to help part-time guardians, people who do this in their part-time, who don't have time to hang out on Reddit every day and learn all the tricks. I want to give them that so they can get in and get the most benefit out of their Destiny playing time. And I'll see you guardians in the tower.